Hello and welcome back to the Wellness Nerd channel. In today's video, I wanna show you how you can hopefully solve pain and dysfunction in this part of your neck and shoulder area. Now it's a little bit tricky to clarify for a lot of people because it's not quite your neck, it's not quite out far enough to be your shoulder. It often sits in this mid-range area, sometimes it comes around through the front. And because of that, we often label it an upper trap dysfunction. And for most of these issues, there's obviously some tightness and some trigger points through that upper trap area. But what we tend to find clinically is that underneath that, there tends to be some rib joint dysfunction, most commonly through the first and second ribs. So what I wanna go through in this video is I wanna go through four different things that you can try to hopefully get to some of that muscular dysfunction, but also help address some of the underlying joint dysfunction that might be perpetuating this issue for you. So the first exercise I wanna to touch on here is one to try and hopefully mobilize any tightness that you might have in that upper trap area. So a very simple way to do this is if you can sit on the hand of the side that you're trying to stretch, this allows you to drop that shoulder down and increase the space between your neck and your shoulder and put that upper trap on more tension. And from here, you can take your head away, you can potentially look down a little bit, you can potentially turn your head from side to side to find the best version of that stretch. If you wanna take it a little bit further, you can reach over the top and gently encourage that tissue to stretch as far as you feel comfortable. But the key point is here, we don't want you to just hang out in this position. I want you to push your head back into your hand, trying to make the area that's tight work and activate. And what this does, as your brain gets involved, when you stop tensing that after about 10 seconds, the muscle should relax a little bit, and you should find you can go a fraction further into the stretch than you could before, and then keep repeating that process. And if you've been feeling around through that area and you originally felt some trigger points or some muscular spasm, in theory, you should feel like that has reduced a little bit or softened a little bit because we did that PNF or that contract relax type stretching technique. Yeah. And then the second and potentially most important exercise to do here is that if there's some muscular tightness through that upper trap at the top there, we always need to recognize that there's potentially some dysfunction through the rib cage, that upper rib cage that runs underneath. What I find clinically is it's one of the main reasons why there's some muscular tightness over the top because it's potentially trying to help support some of the deeper dysfunction underneath. And one of the interesting things about that is a lot of people don't realize that the rib cage genuinely sort of sits and comes all the way up to just below your collarbone. So there's the first rib and the second rib wrap around in that area quite closely to where that upper trap tightness tends to be. But the other interesting thing about this is that the dysfunction associated with that rib cage is often all the way up in the back. So when we're trying to solve this dysfunction or at least trying to get to the heart of why this dysfunction's there, we need to spend a ton of time working through the rib cage as it inserts into the spine, but also as it runs underneath that sort of shoulder shoulder blade and that scapula, that clavicle as it comes around to the front. The great way to do that is by using a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball as we always like to do on the channel. But the main thing we wanna look for here is we're looking for the bump at the base of your neck and the, the, the shoulder blade as it sort of wraps around into this area. In between those two sections, the fleshy part, we want you to have the ball in there somewhere, potentially all the way up to the top where that first rib tends to be. And then again, we want to lie down on top of the ball. We want to go hunting for things that feel a little bit stiff, a little bit tight, potentially a little bit tender. Now, because of where the ball tends to be here, when we're looking at that first rib area, we might need to bridge up a little bit just to get some pressure down onto the ball. You also might need to roll a little bit towards that side to really expose some of that tightness that you may never have realized was there until you dig the ball into it. Now, this is also a great way to find that trigger point or some of that muscular tightness through your upper traps. But the most important thing about this is we want to make sure that we find some spots that feel hard or tight. And we want to stay here for long enough for that tissue to start to release and relax uh, or to mobilize. Now, if you find that this is quite tender, be gentle. You can come back down from a bridge. If you feel like you need a little bit more pressure where, say, a tennis ball isn't hard enough or the floor isn't hard enough, once you've bridged up there and put a bit of pressure through there, you can then lift your arm up and then come up over the top to really assist this shearing free as quickly as possible. Now in a perfect world, you should find that your forearm and your arm can get to the ground without bending your elbow. But for me, if I come down to sort of my second rib area, if it's a little bit stiff here, I find that I get tight about here, but then what should happen is the more I continue to do this, you can hopefully start to see more and more of my face as that tissue starts to mobilize and starts to free up. And if I can get you to hang around on that position for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever you feel you need to do to encourage that tissue to mobilize the most. And then afterwards, it should feel like there's automatically more range of motion in that area and hopefully a decrease in your symptoms. And so the third exercise here sort of moves away from the symptomatic area that you might have in that upper trap sort of neck shoulder region. And we're gonna to start to focus down more so through the chest area or the pec area just underneath 
underneath that collarbone. And the reason for this is that although it's not exactly where you feel your symptoms, if the ribs underneath those symptoms are a bit stiff and dysfunctional, those ribs wrap all the way around into the front of your chest, into the top of your sternum. And what we tend to find is if there's some deeper rib dysfunction, like there might be towards the back, any musculature that attaches to that area or sort of bypasses over the top of that area can be recruited by your brain to help support that area. And one of the muscles that's often recruited by your brain to help support and stabilize those top couple of ribs are your pec muscles, more specifically your pec minor. So what we want to do is we want to give you a stretch similar to the upper trap stretch that can expose any muscular tightness in this area that allows you to take that subtle handbrake off the rib cage at the front to help restore some normal motion to that rib cage and normal loading to that rib cage going forwards. So how we want to do this is if you can find a wall or a bench or something that you can hold on to or basically put your arm up against like a door frame, we basically want to uh, anchor your hand onto something or your forearm onto something and you can move your arm up and down here depending on where you feel gives you best access to that tightness. But for me, I can hold onto the edge of the couch here and essentially I can turn my trunk away and automatically find a really uh, tight spot in this part of my chest area. So for you, we want to make sure that you can wriggle around here. You can sort of roll your shoulder forward a little bit if you want to. You can hunt around to find the best version of that tightness for you. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're here, whether you're here, whether you're up or down. You just want to find a position that you feel exposes any tightness that you may have in this top corner of your chest. And then as we did with the upper trap stretch, we want you to to tense that tightness as best as you can for about five to ten seconds. You want to get that brain involved. The more that it's tensed, when you stop tensing it, it'll relax and that tissue should physically give a little bit and you should be able to go further into the stretch than you could before. And again, we want to get you to keep doing this until you feel you stop making change or you've had enough. And then afterwards, you should automatically feel again that there's less tightness, less restriction through that part of your chest. And it's hopefully one pillar or one foundational issue that we can take off the table that might be asking that tightness to be sore based on a chain reaction of events. So the final exercise we want to touch on here, again, requires us to take a ball to target any of that residual pec tightness in the area. It's a really simple exercise to do. You can definitely do this one up against a door or a door frame, but I'll do this on the ground for you so you can see. And all I want to get you to do here is take the ball, we we'll have the arm by the side, and we want to basically go looking for some tightness in that top corner. Again, we want to incorporate some movement here as best as possible. So if you can start to take your arm out to the side, making sure that you keep some constant pressure on that ball. The other thing we can do, if that feels a little bit uncomfortable, is we can start to lift your hand off the ground and extend your shoulder and shear free some of that muscular tightness. So similar to how we did it with the ball up the back here and going up into shoulder flexion, we can find a tight spot at the front here and I can find a nice spot here for me. I can very gently lift my arm and my hand off the ground and try and shear that tissue free, making sure that I keep constant tension on the ball without losing it. And I can keep working around and around that area, trying to find clues and, and tightnesses and restrictions that again might be part of the problem as to why the ribs are dysfunctional that might also be prompting that upper trap to stay dysfunctional long-term. So it wouldn't be a wellness nerd video if we now didn't talk about the potential broader context as to why that dysfunction is there in the first place. There always has to be a reason for everything musculoskeletally. And specifically for you, if you have one specific part of your neck and shoulder area through that upper traps, which is dysfunctional, there has to be a reason why that side is dysfunctional and not the other side, why that tissue is dysfunctional and not something somewhere else in your body. And what I tend to find clinically, and as you would know if you've been watching some of these videos is that the day-to-day -day positions and shapes that you get into seems to be very closely related to why things are dysfunctional in the body. So if you're someone who has a very specifically tight and dysfunctional area through that upper traps, we want to take a look through the catalog of things that you do day-to-day -day. and interestingly enough we may not necessarily be looking at the active interesting things that are very movement rich. We're never really in one position for too long for any length of time. We're actually generally more interested in the inactive sedentary shapes that prompt you to be in a certain position for hours throughout the day. Now for a lot of people that can be work related whether it's a computer, it can be you know driving to work, it can be sort of reaching down a lot whatever it might be but we also want to make sure that we're looking at the things outside of the work hours so things like sitting on the couch watching TV, reading a book, doing arts and crafts, things that prompt your tissue to sort of deviate away from that clear anatomical position, that ideal posture that we know allows our tissue to be loaded the best over time. So if we're looking for why those, those stiffnesses and tightnesses that you've hopefully found in this video are there, we often tend to find that through gravity and certain postural habits and, and ergonomical setups that we have, it's very easy for our shoulders to drop and roll forwards. 
and the weight of the arm under gravity given enough time essentially asks a lot of the tissue in this area. There's increased load in that area while we're in this position and it's not a problem if we're only here for a short amount of time but if you can look back through your day, look back through your week and find a lot of moments where that side is basically dropped into a position that's putting tension through this area, we can start to try and understand why these tissues might be stiff and dysfunctional and what you might need to change subtly going forwards to guarantee that this is going to go away and it's not going to come back again in the future. So with that being said, as always, I genuinely hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below which exercise you may have found the most benefit from. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this content and you are finding it helpful. And if you are genuinely finding it helpful, please consider leaving a super thanks donation on the video. It's just a great way to help support me and the channel going forwards. So as always, I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time. Bye.